Hey guys, Bonehead here. Just wanted to toss, talk a little bit here about Ubuntu Sway. First, but first, I gotta tell you how I found out about this distro. It's uh, a Linux Cast did a video on it a couple of days ago. Um, he's done other Sway videos before, but this is the first time I've heard of Ubuntu Sway. And, uh, this has been around for at least a year because it, it started on Ubuntu 2204 and it's just flat out awesome. Um, Matt from the Linux cast mentioned he had some issues with it and I think it's because when he does his reviews on window managers, I've noticed uh, DistroTube does this too, several other uh, Linux review YouTubers, whatever you want to call them. Um, they come from the, when it comes to a mid window manager, they come from the point of view of the window, window manager and not the distro that they're reviewing. The, and they have this, they run into these problems with the way the window manager is working and this, that, and the other. And it's because of the way they approach the distro review they're approaching it from a window manager review and distros aren't they don't do that the specific distros will set up the window manager for their distro and the what is their their version of a config for that window manager on their distro and when they approach a window man, I don't know why, but they approach a window manager different than a desktop environment like GNOME or KDE or, you know, any, you know, they look at it and say, well, this is the way that it wants it. But then when they come from the, they, they hit the window manager version of, of a distro and they're like totally oblivious as to what the distro is. They just pay attention to the window manager. And that's because they're window manager eccentric people. So I get that. But uh, I, I got on to Ubuntu Sway through Matt's video. And I got to say, it, it blows my mind. You can find it at UbuntuSway.com. Uh, it, it's, it really it literally is blowing my mind. Um, I thought Sway was just basically I3. Um, they say, according to Sway's documentation, that it's a one-to-one -one for I3. It's not. Um, the way that Ubuntu Sway Remix has got, got it set up on their distro. And if you just look at their instructions... And start off with their configs and approach it from a desktop environment looking thing. Because it's right here, this paragraph right here. This project is an attempt to provide a user-friendly desktop based on Sway. A popular tiling window manager compositor using the modern Wayland graphics stack. Okay. Ubuntu Sway Remix is great for both beginners who want to get familiar with the keyboard-oriented or interface of tiling window managers and advanced GNU Linux users who want powerful, user-friendly, and minimalistic interference. That paragraph right there tells you how to approach the distro. It's a user-friendly desktop based on Sway. So there are... That, that statement states that if there is going to be deviancies or, you know, goes a different direction than what Sway does. Being based on and being Sway is two different things. Okay, so take the way Sway works out of your mind. But I will say it is a much better implementation than... Regolith did with i3 on Ubuntu. <laughs> Way better than what Regolith did. 
Um, it's much more easier to understand. It's just awesome. So when you boot into Ubuntu Sway, this is the default look, okay? This this is your desktop. These are your window man windows that are not windows, but your workspace is up here. And you can I think 10 is configured out of the box. Because I go up to 10. That's super zero. So but this up here at the panel, this is Waybar. And you've got your start shut down just like everything else. And you've got your calendar. You set your appointments. It's pretty easy to figure out. Yes, these are graphic, not graphic GUIs. These are TUIs, text-based user interface. Which one's to quit? Q. I guess it helps if I hover over it. And then you've got your, your ALSA stuff, you know, your volume and all that. These are awesome. I love these. Uh, <clears throat> you got your Bluetooth. I've got Bluetooth on this computer, but I've tried it out. This is one of those things. And then here's your network manager. And then you've got your memory that brings up top. Oh, F10. And then you've got your processor that's top also. And then this is your clipboard. Tells you all the stuff you got in your clipboard. Clear it, you just push the middle button. And then your keyboard changer, your notifications, you can turn them on and off there. This is your power saving mode. That'll that'll uh kicks you into sleep. Let your let your computer go to sleep. Um, this is your night color. If it's nighttime and you've got this enabled, it'll you know it's like redshift. And then you got your weather. Um, this over here, I don't I understand what it's for, but this is just basically your link to your all your apps. I think this is a full screen Rofi, I think. It might not be. But your typical launcher is Super D, which is Rofi. And it works just like Rofi does everywhere. Um it, it you can go to uh well crap. Go back here. You go to Where's the wiki? There it is. This is the Ubuntu Sway wiki. And it's got all your stuff. This is where your configuration files are at. Config, Sway, Config, Common Config. That includes all user and system configs. Those are your regular, your regular config file in your home folder. The way that I, I I I added some of my own keyboard key bindings, and what I did was I I'm using Nautilus. Don't don't judge me. It comes with PC Man FM installed, but because I'm on a multiple monitor, for some stupid reason, when I right click on a you know this right click menu on PC Man FM. Opens on the other monitor. I don't know why. Can't figure it out. But uh, you go to your, your config. So don't judge me anyways. That I'm using Nautilus. And then down here in Sway. Wherever Sway is. There it is. This is your typical config. And then what I did was to, to modify it. I put my... I did a keybindings.conf in the config.d and that 
you know, because on the regular config, it, let me go to, uh, what window? There, open Genie. When you go to Sway, to the config there, you see, and you set your, your theme, I'm going to get to that here soon, and then your variables, and then your global variables, and then user variables are in Sway, config, Sway, variables.d, and then that's where I put, it's because it's got the star.com, it's whatever config.comp is going to show up and it's going to call that from that folder. So, incidentally, that's how you get, or I'm sorry, that's the variables. The user comp is config.d right here. That's how you customize Sway and get your updates without overriding your, your customizations. Um, Now what I what I did was because I don't like this scheme color scheme. What I did was I went to well when you fire it up the welcome app's going to show up and this is going to show up on the auto start and it's got all your you good useful linky links you click on the next and then you can change your color scheme this is your your sway color scheme this is your gtk color screen theme and then for the kde apps you've got a k bantam so what you want to do is your color scheme you click on that and then hit choose and there's only three that comes with it yaru sway matcha dark and breeze sway. I like the Yaru. You can do the matcha if you want. Hit the apply. It'll automatically apply. See how it's a little bit lighter green. And then your Rofi theme changes too. But uh, I, I, I stuck with the Yaru sway and I thought, you know, once you change your uh, GTK theme that opens up and you've got all these other Yaru's on there and the Yaru this the GTK theme is where these colors come from on your way bar so you know you could do that and then uh, let's pick Aubergine Aubergine hit apply you see it changes that and it changes your your GTK apps, but it doesn't change your theme. So what I did was I went through and created a bunch of uh, themes to match the Yaru GTKs, which isn't wasn't really that hard because all it was was you know I just basically changed one color which is the, what turns out to be the title bars and stuff. So I, I've got a GitHub repo, and I'll, I'll keep adding stuff to it. But I've got that, and I customized some NeoFetches to match, because otherwise your NeoFetch just looks like... Uh, that's the default NeoFetch. So what I did, let me just go to... I picked Opera Green... So we'll pick Abergine, Ab Abergine, and you see it changes. I think I'm still recording. Yep, Wayland's doing good. I'm using OBS Studio on Wayland. No problem. Surprising the crap out of me. Anyways, so now I've got that. You know, my theme matches my gtk theme but the neo fetch looks like crap so what you can do is when you know you get clone my my uh watchman jigger my repo 
on GitHub. And then the NeoFetch configs. Just take that and you copy it to your NeoFetch config. Where's config? NeoFetch. Okay, paste it in there. Change your config.com. Rename it to something creative like that BK up. And then take your aubergine.com. Rename to config.com. And just like that, your NeoFetch matches your theme. The um, that's just the the way you do it on the welcome app. To actually do it, you know, you're supposed to put it in Etsy. No, put it in user slash share slash Ubuntu Sway dot and then themes. But that is being what it is, you know. But I did create, because the wallpaper obviously looks like crap now. You just hit Super D, bring up your Rofi, type in wallpaper. You usually hit the first one that pops up. And I created some of these. This is your default wallpaper. And this, you got to you know, just pick one. This one looks closer to Albergine. Double click on it, and it puts it on all your monitors. And then hit check mark. And then you can close it, and boom, there you go. Kind of looks the same. See, yeah, I got the colors a little different. But either way, that that's my point. If you approach the distro from the distro's point of view, and not the desktop environment or the window manager's point of view, you're going to get it a lot easier, and you're going to have less problems. Like I said, the only problem I've had is with PC Man FM. When I right click on something, well, you can't see it, but it pops out on the opposing monitor. It's like it's just too far off to the right for some reason. I don't know if that's a sway thing or if it's a Ubuntu thing. But it is annoying, and it's annoying enough that I installed um, Nautilus. The other thing to print to print screen, yeah, print screen, is your screenshot tool, and it pops up, and you you can choose it by yeah. You know, see up here, it says pick is P, output is O, active is A. So if I want to take a screenshot of just this window, I hit A, and there's the screenshot. Okay. If I want to take a screenshot of the output, I push O, and that's the the whole window. Um, that you're on. If I want to take a screenshot and pick it, I push P, and then you can zoom in, and there you go. Pretty simple, pretty easy. The one other thing, you've got a recorder, which you can hit Super Shift and R, and that'll pull up your rec screen recorder. You can even capture your mic at the same time, and... I'm not going to do it right now because I'm recording with OBS and I don't want to screw anything up. It'd be my luck. I'd screw something up. But anyways, that's it. If you want to check it out, UbuntuSway.com and it's, it's awesome. Oh, I'm on the wrong. There we go. <laughs> I'm still trying to remember all the keyboard stuff. But I've got my, my dot files backed up, so I'm going to stay here for a while. I like Ubuntu's way. Um, best of all, there's no snaps. Flatpak is not enabled out of, out of the box, so you have to enable that. But other than that, they don't 
for the package manager, they use GNOME package kit. You just hit Rofi and packages, and this is GNOME package kit. And it's just freaking awesome. It, it, it's so simple. Makes it easy. There's no reason why why you to make it hard. So there you have it. Ubuntu Sway Remix. Go download it. It is, by the way. Twenty three oh four. So this October they're gonna update it again. I'm sure it'll probably have its problems just like every distro does. And dude, this this could probably pull me away from Pop OS for the day job because I I used it all week last week for the day job, and it's just astounding. So there you have it. Ubuntu Sway Remix, ubuntusway.com.